There's 653 here today, Carol, and it's great. People we know, local people, not far to travel, and uh, yeah, it's like a community thing. Uh, the game itself is a part of it, of course. The the social side of it is is a bigger part of it for me. Just the camaraderie here and the community spirit and the seeing your friends here. And you say you get to watch a good game. Because my my son Stuart plays for the first team, and we just love coming down and supporting Stuart and the whole team. I, I've been involved with football all my life, so um, for me. Uh, the interest in football has come since I was a kid. It's been there. My dad played, I've played, um, and so it's just progressed right through my childhood into my adulthood, and it's part of my life. I like watching football because it's nice to come and spend time with friends and family and yeah, support a team together. It's a good sense of community. It's really good. It's local to me, so it's a fantastic thing to do. And you get to, and you have a, a great community here in Felixstowe, and so you get to know other people. To love football, especially the uh, non-league football. More entertainment than a professional game, I think. And today was a classic example. Fantastic stuff. There's a lot going on at the club, apart from the first team fighting to, to try and gain promotion. One area that's exciting is the development of the club's academy. Okay, so, here we are. Uh, this part, what we're about to look at, we're looking at. This part we're about to look at at the moment is all about the Bradford City Stadium vibe. Does anyone know that, by the way? Okay, word of warning, there is a lot of people running through there. Like, there's a lot of people running through their lives, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, legislation. So by now, um, we should have researched uh, examples of how people obtain information to promote learning, how they uh, remember things that they're taught, and the different ways in which we learn ourselves. So you've obviously learned that quite a lot with the different models we looked at, and now you can hopefully put that into practice. Okay, so, Mr. Rhys Henry. <coughs> Hello. Explain yourself, please. Here we are. Today you're with the academy here at Felixstowe. Yeah. You play for Hebrew Shrift, how's that work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I don't, I obviously I don't mix the two up. Um, I'm very, very fortunate to be in both positions to still be playing um, above the age of 30 these days. is somewhat hard for some people, but I, I still try. You look and, older. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's these lot. No, it's, uh, it's definitely different. Obviously, having the academy here at Felixstowe um, is brilliant. Good. Um, and then is you know it's, it's equally as, as important to keep playing as high as I can for as yeah. long as I can and yeah I enjoy it. So what is it? So what what makes you do this? What motivates you to do this? Um, I think just seeing the boys develop, you know, week by week, session yeah. by session, day by day is for me enough initially. And then when you when we when they put into practice on the pitch what we're trying to teach them both on and off the pitch as people and as players, um, equally that's as important to us. Um, you know, and the philosophy of how we how we like to play comes out later on. But first and foremost, about them improving as human beings. Yeah. And, um, but also, I mean, for example, sorry to interrupt. Um, just before we started this interview, we decided to do it around here because the lads were just over there, and you said, "Now let's yeah. do it somewhere else because they'll wind me up." Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, because I know <laughs> what they're like. They're teenage boys in the day. So uh, <laughs> if anyone works for them or has them as their own, then they they know exactly what they can be like, and I'll probably be getting a lot of stick when I go back in there. But... Brilliant. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Final question. Um, cast your mind forward about a year. Yeah. Uh, where do you reckon things might be as far as the academy is concerned, or where would you like them to be? I think in terms of player player development. Um, I'd like for them on the pitch and in football terms to be more of them to be in the under-23s, ultimately. Um, maybe at that point, one or two regularly with the first team. Yeah. Um, and then from an education point of view, just to keep on pushing them as far as we can. SCL is an education group, we're obviously offering quite a lot of apprenticeship opportunities. Yeah. Um, so university is not the be-all end-all for, for the boys at all, but we'd certainly like to push them you know, as far as we can academically and equally in their, in their football development. Good. Well, you keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers, Rhys. Cheers, no worries. Thank you. Then you, you're not going to get a high grade, so you need to be able to take this and talk a little bit more in detail about how these coaches specifically manage uh, their team. Okay? With those points. Well, it was true that Stuart Baudley had his work cut out, having to manage the team for the tough trip away to Hashtag United. What he wouldn't have a problem with, however, was simply motivating his team.
chatting to Felix Do fans before the game, most knew this was going to be a tough match, but there was some optimism flowing around. I mean, hashtags winning round would have to come to an end soon, wouldn't it? It's just one change from last week. Um, we'll talk to you. They, they'll, there'll be changes for them because they've got suspensions, so we're not quite sure how they'll shift things around. Said you know, we haven't, I haven't got on about the feeling coming home from last time. They, they handed, us, handed us our asses last time. Yeah, it was a thumping, right? And we owe ourselves. We need to go out there and play with an energy and an intensity and a pace and a power that we're capable of that takes some places they don't want to go. That's. And we are underway as Lucas Wood, our referee today, blows the whistle. Hashtag United going for that. Record breaking. Every week could be a chance to continue that. Crazy winning streak. Can we get to 21 wins today? Let's hope so. We've got Pedro on the left-hand side now. Waldridge with a nice little overlapping run. Beats his man. Cuts back inside. Back to Pedro. Looping ball in. Jermaine, who can do no wrong right now. Doesn't quite get full contact on the header. Hello, Harry. Are you joining me? Oh, what a treat. What a delight. Don't seem so happy about it, mate. Oh, wow. No, you know what? There's a chance there. The number 10, Zach Brown, went down. The referee immediate and quite affirmative head shake there. So we'll see if he keeps that consistency up. Something you've got to adapt to. You're not getting free kicks. You've got to stand your feet more. Do you know what? Jermaine won't give up. And he's got there. He's got there first. Great flick back to AT. That is purely from the work rate and endeavour of Jermaine Francis. Everyone in the ground thought that was going out. He didn't. He got there first. Really nice flick on. And AT did equally as well to get something towards the goal. But it's a good save from Callum Robinson. Go on. Callum. Go on Jermaine Francis here is one-on-one -on -one with the number two. He's a man whose head's down. He doesn't mind running at players. But you know what? The two's done incredibly well there. Harry Blackburn. Jermaine, nice and direct, as I think you've got to be on a counter-attack. Just went for it. But Harry Blackburn matched him, in fairness. Felix though showing they are a worthy opponent. Good, Jay. Hashtag showing signs of their recent exciting attacking form as Toby tries to get a range finder down. Second first half substitute for Felix though. Two injuries in the first half. And Felix though able to clear and there goes the half time whistle. A pretty frustrating half for the tags. I'm sure Devs have some words to say to get a bit of an inspired performance for the second half. We're not seeing things early enough. We're not being brave enough with our passing. And what we're doing is we have two or three passes at the back. We become a straight line again, and then it's one false ball that either goes straight through or is uh, a fight ball. And they've got bodies back there. We've got, we're better than that. We're better than that. We've got to be better than that. They've had been forced into two substitutions. They come into scrap and spoil. We can't get sucked into that. Focus on us. Focus on the job in hand. I think our runs have got to be more, um, with more intent. Come on. Back underway by PK's efforts back towards Anderson. Let's see if that team talk from Devs can inspire a big reaction in this second half. And you know what, it may well do straight away because we've got Pedro Cavallio on the left-hand side here. Bit. And it's really just not good enough from the tags here. They haven't come out with any new oh vigour from this second half. Why and Reed though, that is what you want to see. No way! Oh that is ridiculous. I mean, I think that Why and Reed has made an incredible run back, got in the way, made a very good challenge. The referee's given it as a free kick. I mean, I'll be honest, my first thought was if it's a foul, it's in the box. Just really strange decision. He's got a yellow card as well, second of the day for the tags. I'm watching the replay back now. Wine is running back. It is just outside the box in fairness, but I don't see it as a foul. Big moment here. Callum Harrison with a free kick. Whips it. It's a really good strike, but Phil does just enough to stop it and then gather it on the second chance. A decent strike from Harrison. You can tell he gets good venom on those. White still pushing forward. Here is Hasnali. Doing really well. It wasn't Hasnali, actually. It was, it was Hasnali. Up to Oli Miles. Back towards Pedro. It's going to be a Felix to throw. Be one of them where the guys at Sudbury we're looking at our result going, it's nil-nil. So if we can just get a goal, we get to put a dagger through their hearts. Yeah. Football web pages updates. One nil hashtag United. Oh. And what's coming in on it? It's a yellow off. card. 
It's a, is it? Time it's a wasted. second yellow. It's a second yellow card out of nowhere for Stuart Ainsley. The referee has started getting very card happy in this second half. Stuart Ainsley, just we thought they'd been time wasted for a while. We've spoken about it here. But Ainsley this time is maybe, he's, he's the one who's paying the price for the rest of his team's actions, particularly Callum Robinson, the goalkeeper. Yeah. So the extra man should be in the midfield now then, right? Yeah. Pumped forward by Ando. Onto the run of Wyan Reid, who goes down. Can he find a man in the box? He's over everyone. Jermaine Francis, who's yeah! done it! Incredible stuff! Incredible scenes for the tags! Just a few Get moments later, from them going down to 10 men, the ball is played to Wyan Reid, who's gone and played in a more attacking position for the second half. And he gets down and puts an inch-perfect pass into that man who can't stop scoring goals. It's Jermaine Francis into the back of the net. Hashtag 1-0 up. And we go back nine points clear at the top of the table. 21 wins in a row is still on. That is unbelievable. Straight after the red card, we've made use of it. Got in behind. I don't know who played the first ball, but Wine's got in behind the fullback. Looks across the box. Jermaine, who else but that man, Jermaine, in the back post. Off wow. the left, as we said last week, Seb. That's my favourite position for him. Slots it in. 1-0. 1-0. What a time to be a tag. I mean, that must really hurt Felix, though, because they've been grinding. It's another red card. Another red card. It's Callum another Harrison. red card. We just said the ref started giving out yellows, and out of nowhere, in the space of five minutes, first of all, Stuart Ainsley's second yellow for time-wasting. Now Callum Harrison gets a second yellow card, I think, for descent. Yeah, talking about And the all of a sudden, from grinding out a nil-nil, they're now 1-0 down, and then down to nine men, Harry. Right, so starting on a positive, they worked bloody hard today. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't be prouder of the boys. I think that from minute one to minute 90, they, they worked incredibly hard. They bought into the system that we came here with, which was a change, obviously. And yeah. I said at half-time, really, that the game couldn't have thrown any more at them. Um, but we lost two players early on through injury in the first half, both in the same position. So we've got players playing out of position. But they dug in, they fought hard, yeah. they ran hard, they were together. And I, and I felt on balance of play we deserved a point. Um, that, that, that's couldn't nice agree more. Yeah. On the game. yeah, and you know, a bit like you. Yeah, I don't, don't want to sort of spend too much time talking about the referee, but we were right by the Stuart Ainsley incident, and it seemed bizarre to me. Yeah, he knows he's made an error. Uh, yeah. Didn't say anything to Stuart. Just decided to send him off for time wasting without even sort of saying speed up or anything. You know, Man exactly. Exactly. referees are there to manage the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but there was but this kind of assumption on his part that sort of, oh, well, Felix, I might be wasting time because, you know, they'd be happy with nil-nil. Well, oh, no, we were trying to win it. Yeah, there's times when we have to slow the game down. Um, uh, you know, and I'm sure Hashtag have done it at points this season, you know. Um, like, they were towards the end when they're 1-0 up. Um, exactly. But, yeah, it's just, yeah, very, very difficult. And, and, and it's, it's difficult to stand here as a manager when, when your lads have worked so incredibly yeah. hard, played against 12 men, um, and gone away with nothing when, when I felt we deserved something you know I, I thought the game plan from start to finish um, worked very well um, and I'm proud of every one of them so yeah. I couldn't have asked any more from them and no. um, yeah we move on So moving forward to Goldston just briefly you know we've got players some coming back from suspension some well we won't lose Joe will we because we won't lose Stuart for Tuesday will we? No no, no. Both, both players will be available, available Tuesday Available Tuesday yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, both players will be available Tuesday and then, um, yeah, they'll, they'll m miss the following Saturday. The following Saturday. Yeah. Just dependent upon, you know, yeah. how, how many games bad yeah. they get. I'll be lose track of it all, to be honest. Yeah, but, right. You know, yeah. We, we, we were missing five or six today. Yeah. We'll have three of them back um, on yeah. Tuesday. So, yeah, we, yeah. we move on and, and yeah. we, we put out as strong a side as we can again on yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And yeah. 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 So I'm the PA announcer and I also sponsor the uh, minibus okay cats dogs or rabbits rabbits and who do you support liverpool and what's your name steve foley right you're not coming on here again following liverpool well, i'm ready when you are go john kimball right off right okay, who do you support tottenham elsewhere okay train boat or plane 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 okay um spain germany or canada canada Thank you. My name is Tom and I support West Ham. 
I am the away match photographer for Felix Sam Wilton. Good, okay. Uh, Spain, Italy or Florida? It's got to be Florida. Elliot, warehouse operative. Cricket, rugby or tennis? Rugby. Rugby. Okay, cheers. Right, Steve Friston. I work in a print firm and I support Tottenham Hotspur. Right, okay. Uh, beef, fish or vegetables? Oh, beef. Yeah. Oh, Tony Puerto. Oh, okay. Used to be a bus driver for London Transport. And oh, support Fulham. Okay. I've got a question for you. Um, beer, wine or chocolate? Beer. Okay, cheers. Next up was another away trip, this time to Galston. This was a tricky game because although Galston was sitting mid-table, their current form was second only to, yeah, you guessed it, hashtag United. And Felix had needed to get back in those playoff places. Not an awful lot to say about this game. Um, we, we, we didn't sell ourselves. It wasn't a good day at the office. And uh, to be honest, we knew that the quicker we forgot this game, the better. Some games you just kind of write off. This was one of them. The point each was probably a fair result, and the goal destroyed did lift the Seasiders back into a playoff position, but the fight for promotion it was getting hard. Let me introduce Chris Daines. At various times, social and commercial manager, program editor, bar manager, facilities manager, chief operating officer, co-chairman, burger flipper, and let's face it, some people are just greedy. So, how, how many hours a week do you put into this, Chris? Probably easier to add up how many hours I'm not here. Okay. Um, but minimum 70. It's, it's literally seven days a week. Wow. Um, and even when you're not here, it's, you know, it never stops. Phones going, you know, you're, you're everyone's back and call. Um, it's, it's a big beast and it, you know, it's all encompassing. And this goes back a good few years as well, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. what, what was your first involvement with the club? First involvement with the club was as a supporter, just as yeah. a young kid running around the grounds like the kids do now. You know, okay. First game, Letchworth Garden City, 1987, I think, in the FA Vars. Lost. Um, things don't change. Um, but yeah, joined the committee 20 years ago, 2003, just after the merger. Um, after uh, responding really to a request for new blood. Yeah. And obviously, done every job in between from Lippin Burgers to chairman ever since. And your biggest, or the biggest achievement of the club, which might be the same for you as it is for the club, but... Yeah, it, it is the same because it, it enabled us to progress on the pitch and it, it's this clubhouse. The clubhouse, yeah. Uh, we couldn't go anywhere in the old one. Oh. It reached the end of its life, couldn't get promotion, couldn't give fans a match day experience, you know. Um, 
been involved in right from the early stages of drawing up the plans, raising all the finance, project managing the build, and then just coming in to actually manage the facility. You know, that, that's obviously then enabled the club to move forward on the pitch, bring in the crowds, bring in the sponsors, you know, and all the rest of it. And there's now plans for an extension to the clubhouse as well? Yeah, yeah, it never stops. Um, I think the hardest thing, maintaining what we've achieved and then still planning for the future. Um, so, what, so what motivates you? I think just coming into work every day for the club that you love. Yeah. Uh, knowing that every day you're helping move the club forward. Um, and obviously as a byproduct of that, you'll bring in community and entertainment to hundreds more people. You know, stood up on the gantry at the last home game and just looking around. And I nudged my brother, who's obviously been there right from the beginning as well, and said, you know, <laughs> look what we and the club have achieved here. It, it, it doesn't get any better than that. As far as league action is concerned, next up was Basildon away. Unfortunately, heavy rain had put pay to that little trip down the A12. Elsewhere, local rival Stone Market were hosting league leaders hashtag. Shock of the day was Stone Market beating hashtag 3-1, much to the delight of our home fans. Right, enough of this. This is supposed to be about Felixstone, not Stone Market. Back at base camp, Felixstone Walton were looking after some of the youngest of the juniors on the morning before the postponed game at Basildon. <coughs> the Seaside has run an impressive junior setup with teams at under 6 level through to under 15s, accommodating more than 200 kids. Add that to the under 18s, the academy, and the under 23s. And there's plenty going on at the AGL Arena. And it's not just about the first team. And we'll have much more about the juniors in, in future episodes.